you know, some people almost came to Gonzaga solely after an experience in uh, Florence with Father Tony. Uh, he was just one of those guys that, I mean, could really reach out and touch uh, uh, everybody. Uh, you know, when, when, uh, when we lost him, uh, there was nobody that could really uh, fill those shoes, so we waited a while, and then, uh, you know, fortunately for us uh, now, uh, Father Hightower uh, came on board and done a great job, and uh, our guys uh, cer certainly enjoy being around him. All right, Coach, when we come back, we'll check in with a new exhibit here on the campus talking more college basketball. Stay with us. Here is this week's Rada Paint finish of the week. In the second half of Thursday's Portland game, Elias Harris gets the steal, spins off a defender, and throws a bounce pass to Stephen Gray for a two-handed flush. That's this week's Rada Fresh Local Paint finish of the week. Rada Fresh Local Paint, made in the Northwest for our Northwest environment, because just like in hoops, it's the finish that counts. And welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Well, this basketball program certainly has made history over the last decade, but this is a basketball tradition now that goes back many, many decades. Caitlin Bullduck has this story. They're the books written by legends, 15th century philosophy preserved in these tattered leather-bound books. Their words dated by their distinct smell and stained paper, books locked away. So back here in the vault. In Gonzaga University's rare book collection only to be seen by a select few. They're very rare and hard to find. It's the mystery of our nation's history that is revealed in these novels, a glimpse at life hundreds of years ago. And now for the first time in university history, it's the legends of Gonzaga that are unlocked in the Foley Library. The stories of the many men and women who once took to the court. So all these things that are on display have never been seen by the public. And so this is a, fr a free public exhibition for people to come to Gonzaga, see these things that they probably haven't seen before. It's a showcase of 100 plus years of basketball, told through photographs instead of words. Snapshots into the life of former MVPs, all time highest scores, players long since gone, but not forgotten. How young they look and their uniforms are so different than what we think about today's basketball. This black and white photo shows one of the first teams ever to represent the Bulldogs on the court. They probably didn't know it then, but the young men there were the ones to start a legacy that would last the ages. My hope is to actually get former players here, but as well as the current ones, so they can kind of see what kind of heritage they are, uh, they've come into. So it's not just the current year, but it goes all the way back. A man most famous for his music is captured in this team photo. It seems Bing Crosby even dabbled in the game before making it big in the entertainment business. Here, the then tallest player of the 50s, a recruit from France, shakes hands with the shortest player at the time. And these photos show the man referred to as the great one by all Zags who followed. Frank Burgess, one of the NCAA's 400 best players to ever play Division I ball. Well, I think it's important for people to see that the decade of excellence just isn't the last 10 years but we really do have history of basketball here at Gonzaga and I want to help educate the people and also just kind of have some fun with learning and that's what this uh, display is trying to do is teach people at the same time go wow that's neat I didn't know that each photo tells a different story of the many men and women you might not remember when you think of the Zags but they're the men and women who one by one made their impact on the court and on the scoreboard and their stories go on and on, not just through old photos, but through trophies, rings, and even old ticket stubs, all carefully collected and preserved here in this exhibit to bring back to life their one-of-a-kind tales, tales that paved the way for the men and women of today that now proudly sport the Gonzaga jersey, who make their own snapshots into time to be added to the collection with every record they set. History preserved only perhaps to one day be beaten by players 100 years in the future that only continue to make Gonzaga basketball what it is today. I want people to go back saying, I learned something about Gonzaga basketball. For the Mark Few Show, I'm Caitlin Bolduck. 
If you'd like to see the exhibit, Hoop It Up, Gonzaga's Basketball Heritage, it opens Monday in the rare book section on the third floor of the Foley Library on Gonzaga's campus. The exhibit closes in April, so don't miss your chance to witness history. Toyota and Verizon are teaming up to give away the Toyota Kennel Cruiser to one lucky fan. Text GOZAGS to 35773 and be entered to win a 2010 Toyota Camry along with great Verizon prizes including a new Blackberry and all the accessories. One fan will win the new 2010 Toyota Camry at the final home game of the season on March 2nd. You're watching The Mark Few Show. We'll be right back. And welcome back to The Mark Few Show. Uh, Another big week as we move towards uh, March, Coach. Uh, St. Mary's, San Diego, uh, these are two teams. First start with St. Mary's. I mean, they're really good. They're really, really good. They are. And yeah. they're having just a phenomenal year and uh, just been amazing with their consistency. Yeah. And they have not had what seems to be a bad game. I mean, they've went on the road and taken care of the, the teams that are, you know, uh, uh, not in the top tier in our conference. Uh, They've had, you know, uh, they've been remarkable at home, just jumping guys and, and winning big double-digit uh, games. Uh, they, they just present a lot of problems. They got probably the best uh, center, you know, uh, west of the Mississippi, and uh, who's just posted incredible numbers this year, <laughs> numerous 20-plus rebound games. You get, you know, if you play him one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to kind of work you over. If you double him. They just surround him with just uh, phenomenal three-point shooters, and they can really, really hurt you uh, with the three. And they, they spread you out and then uh, kind of make you pick your poison. Uh, they also, uh, if you don't watch it, they'll throw it ahead and transition and, and uh, hit a three on you uh, that way. And then uh, lately, it looks like they've been uh, defending really, really well. So, you know, it's yeah, we, we played very good down there and, and got ourselves a good uh, road win, and uh, I think we'll have to play even better uh, up here now, now that we, you know, they, they seem like they have improved a lot since uh, uh, we last played them. And, and uh, you know, with Sam Han, they got a certain toughness about them, and, and uh, they don't turn the ball over, uh, which also makes it difficult. So, uh, I mean, they, they, they have a look of an NCAA tournament uh, uh, team, and they've certainly, you know, their record shows it. And with San Diego, uh, DeJon Jackson now out for the season, yeah. we may see some rugby scrums. Yeah, you know, game. I mean, we're going to, obviously, with uh, Billy coming back home, yeah. uh, I mean, he'll probably throw everything in the, at the kitchen sink at us with yeah. every defense. And, and you know, the, the, sometimes teams like that are dangerous. They have absolutely nothing to lose and can come in here free and easy. And uh, certainly they know us and they know all about us. Uh, he knows us better than anybody. So, uh, I mean, I, I think we should expect anything and everything. And, and uh Obviously, uh, they really pride themselves on a low-scoring game and, and hoping that that'll frustrate, uh, uh, you know, the other team. Uh, so, you know, the positive thing for us, we've been able to win some uh, low-scoring games. The Memphis game was a grinder, and uh, uh, we didn't seem too uh, uh, discouraged by how the, the pace of the game was going. We took pride with our defense there. The game will be over before this airs, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Who wins the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, man, that one's a, I'm a big Peyton Manning fan, yeah. huge Peyton Manning fan, just how he prepares. And, and uh, you know, when your best player is your hardest worker, that, that's a championship team. I mean, mm. you think of the Jordans and Kobe's and, and Birds and all those guys that were able to uh, do that. But, golly, it would be so nice to see the city of New Orleans get a uh, – I'm just going to sit back and uh, – uh, Enjoy it. I hope it's a great game. So, It's the Mark View Show. Have a great week. We'll see you next week right here.